Hello, let's have a look at virtual storage now. So we've got in a computer an annoying amount of different storage devices. And the difference between storage and memory is always a little bit wishy-washy in computer science, unfortunately. But essentially, we've got loads of components which are able to, in some way, store files, either permanently or short term if it's volatile. Cache, ROM, RAM, and secondary storage. Now, our three types of secondary storage are optical, magnetic, and flash. And virtual storage isn't a fourth type, it just utilizes these in a different way. Now you have to understand another term within this topic, which is local storage. Local storage is when files are held within a component in your computer. So a sort of normal use of storage might be considered local storage. Whereas a slightly abnormal use of storage is virtual storage. Now virtual storage appears like the files exist in one place, but in reality, the files are physically held somewhere else. So the word virtual really implies some trickery. Things aren't quite what they seem. So the most obvious example of virtual storage is cloud storage. This is when files are held in an off-site location and are accessed through the internet. I'm sure you've used examples of cloud storage. You would never use brand names in the exam, but they're useful to have that in your point of reference. And essentially, these files are not held on your computer locally. They're held in Microsoft's data center. Data center will be a massive collection of servers. A server is a computer which is just designed to give stuff to people requesting it. There'll be thousands and thousands of individual storage devices, which will be either SSDs or hard drives, most likely. And when I upload a file to cloud storage, it gets transferred via the internet to one of your servers. It gets saved on the server. Then when I wanna go and access it later, I request Apple or Microsoft give me that file, they go searching for it in their servers, they then send that file to me and I can open it. And often it appears like it's physically on our computer. I speak to colleagues all the time who don't really understand how cloud storage works. They think it's actually somewhere on my computer. And when the internet goes down, they're really confused as to why they suddenly can't access their work. So especially for non-specialists, it does quite a good job of tricking people and making it appear like it is somewhere where it is not. Now we could be asked to evaluate different examples of virtual storage. Here are some of the key evaluation points for cloud storage, which like I say, is just a type of virtual storage. So one of the key benefits is it's easily scalable. Now scalable means we can easily increase or decrease our storage capacity. So if I run out of storage space on my local hard drive, well, I've got to go buy a new one and potentially I've not got space in my computer to fit a new physical hard drive. Whereas if I need to increase my allowance on iCloud, I just pay Apple a bit more money a month and I get a much more large capacity because Apple have got thousands and thousands of individual hard drives. They've already got space for me to easily increase my capacity. And the same is true of decreasing it. If I suddenly don't need five hard drives, I need to start selling these hard drives, a bit annoying. But if I don't need as much storage on cloud storage, I can just easily scale it back if I want to. And because these files are physically held in one point and these servers are designed to be accessed from multiple locations, often we can collaborate on cloud storage when we can't on local storage or not as easily. Normally these big cloud providers provide fairly strong policies like backing up files automatically so we can restore old files and they should also encrypt the files with strong and robust encryption. And one of the key benefits is flexibility. We're able to access our files from any location and any device However, to do that, we need to have an internet connection. So one of the key limitations is how strong our connection is. And if you don't have a connection at all, we can't access any of our files. Another factor is cost. When we are buying new SSDs or new hard drives for ourselves, there is a, a fixed cost at the start. We don't pay for it ongoing. However, cloud storage, if you want to have your files remaining on the servers, you've got to pay them every month, which can add up more overall. And the last point is good and bad, potentially, if it's a good provider, but we are extremely reliant on the cloud provider for being available. If the server goes down or starts breaking, that's going to affect us quite a lot. And also we're really reliant on them for good security and things like backups. We've got no control really over how they organize their servers. So we are trusting they're doing it in a proper way. It's really, really important to understand in all of this that this is, is virtual storage. We are still storing files in a physical component. It's just not a physical component in our computer. It's a physical component in Google or Microsoft or Apple's computer in a data center. 
So they're still using hard drives. They're still using SSDs to physically store it. It's just held somewhere else to us. So cloud storage isn't the only example of virtual storage. I think it's important to be aware of some other examples as well, even if you don't necessarily have to know these by name. So a first example I want to give for you is NAS, short for Network Attached Storage. This is like cloud storage, but on your local network. So you've got a dedicated file server. A file server is just a server designed to store loads of files and you access these files via your local network, not the internet. So it looks something like this is just a fairly boring looking box, which has multiple either hard drives or SSDs. And it'll be connected to your network. You're able to send requests to it and it will send you files if you need them. And the effect is that you are able to access this file server on any computer in your local network. So you can picture an office, every computer in the office is able to access these files. It might be used for a shared area to put files, which every employee needs to be able to access. Of course, a business could use cloud storage to do this exact same thing. However, they may feel they want more control. They are able to have this file server in their building. They're able to decide exactly the policies. They're able to ensure that it's looked after and maintained. And also because it's held within the local network, there's maybe less risk of interception. Across the internet, you've got no control over where it's being sent, whereas you do if it's within your local network. And scalability is always going to be a benefit of virtual storage. We've got five, maybe six hard drives here. Well, I probably can't fit six hard drives into my desktop computer. So therefore, this gives me more scalability. I can increase my capacity by quite a bit. Obviously, there's a fixed limit to this. If, I, if my company uses up space on all six hard drives, I've got to buy a new NAS or use cloud storage or do something like that. So because this is its own dedicated machine, this is quite expensive. I've got to buy its own dedicated storage units as well. And there is a degree of expertise needed to run and maintain these. Not everyone would be able to do this. Another example of virtual storage just to have in our mind is RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And this is when files are split and also copied across multiple different storage units. So here, this diagram is showing we've got five disks, which could be hard drives or so. Disk is a little bit old as a word, but this could be SSDs as well, which haven't got disks, of course. These could be different SSDs. And we can see we've got A, B, C, D, E. Each letter is representing a different file. And a file could be either a program or some data that program is using. And we can see each of our five different files here are being split across different storage units. So program A is being split across five different storage devices. Well, that splitting, what is the benefit of it? Well, I'm able to potentially get better performance out of this setup because I'm actually now able to access this in parallel. We've looked at how typically reading a file from storage has to be done in serial, which can be a bottleneck for you. However, here I've got five different hard drives or five different SSDs. I'm able to access each one in parallel. Therefore, each little chunk can be read in parallel, potentially giving me high performance overall. And this diagram doesn't show the copying, which often also happens in RAID, with different levels of RAID, but I might have a sixth hard drive, which just has A copied as a backup. Now that's redundant, that's where the word redundant comes from. Arguably that's a downside to have redundancy because I'm kind of wasting storage. But of course, the purpose is to have backups available to you in case one of your storage devices fails. And the downsides are basically the exact same as NAS. We've got more storage devices here and it's a more complex setup, which is harder to run. Now it's an example of virtual storage because when I'm accessing program A or um, file B, it appears to me like it is one program. It appears to me like it's on one hard drive. If I'm opening uh, a, a Word document, which is D, it doesn't look any different to if it was on a single hard drive. So that's why it's virtual storage because it appears different than it actually physically is. And the two final examples I want to give you, I'm not going to explain at all because we're going to cover these properly in future videos, but virtual memory and virtual machines both are examples of virtual storage. Now it's really, really annoying to have such similar terms to virtual storage on the specification. I mean, memory and storage are already quite vague as terms. So we've got virtual memory and virtual storage. Arguably, virtual memory is an example of virtual storage because in virtual memory, it appears like a program or file is in RAM, but in reality, it's actually physically stored in secondary storage. 
the game you've got about trickery. And virtual machines are in some ways fake computers, which appear like they've got their own dedicated RAM or storage. In reality, this is borrowed from what's called the host machine. So we'll look at these in more detail, but there are other examples to have in your head of virtual storage.